Hey, what's up guys? I'm Great Horn and welcome back to Millennia. So in today's episode, we'll be entering the Age of Generals, which remember is a victory age, which has some interesting mechanics. But before we do that, there's one thing I'd like to get done. We're gonna get the Trade Factory. So the reason why I didn't get this before is because remember, when it comes to getting the outpost, you know, any of the goods for the outpost, the trade posts don't cost us anything. And so therefore it made sense to just keep these, but we are now swimming in improvement points. And so there's no reason not to upgrade these to trade factories. Now we might not want to do it here since we'll probably be at war with the British in the next turn. So these are just going to get destroyed anyways. But with the trade factories, you'll get two of each of these goods. So in any location where we have an outpost that isn't at risk of being instantly destroyed within the next couple turns, because they just can't defend themselves properly, which I don't know that we have too many. Uh, there's these ones over here. It makes sense to do. And we'll see that will also now upgrade as well. So we can easily press the button here. So we'll get these locations here and that is all of our improvements and so now we're getting two of each of these trade goods and so we'll continue to do that use our improvement points for that all right so i think that's all we needed to do before we end our turn and enter into the age of generals and we'll see that the ai will likely whoever ends up uh, joining against us will likely start attacking our troops immediately which would probably just take place against merchants. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. So we are trading uh, with the Aztecs, and they clearly did not join our faction. They're not an autocracy, and we can see the same thing here with the Egyptians. So Egypt is also not an autocracy. And so they're all going to attack us. So they attacked our explorers there. I don't know if they'll be able to get out of Egyptian territory. Probably not, they're really deep in their territory at the moment. I'd be surprised if we can get them out of there. And then the merchants that we have in any of those uh, cities, they'll be ejected out and then destroyed. And so our income has gone down by a lot. Uh, we did get our innovation event here for the Fatherland, so we are pretty close to getting it. I kind of was hoping that we'd get one more in the Age of Revolution, but it's fine if we get uh, you know get it here, because then we'll get the special bonus specific for the Age of Generals. Each day the nation of Rome brings new cities under the glorious fold of their leadership. Rome marches ever onward. And so this is going to give us a 2 plus warfare experience from every combat per unit. And so if you have, say, right now we have 6 units that can engage in combat, that means we're going to get an additional 12 warfare experience. So basically we're going to be swimming in warfare experience now. And we're probably going to be swimming in it anyways just because we're going to be doing a lot of fighting from here on out. So we did send us to the Age of Generals. That means we will get that innovation as well. So here's the unique mechanics for this Victory Age. Victory is achieved by the faction that reaches two times the greater military might than all other nations combined. So that means other factions, which the, uh, the countries that don't join our faction, will create their own factions when they get the last of the governments. And so that happens even if you're not in the Age of Generals. There'll be like a democracy faction, a communist faction, so on. Uh, so it's going to take them a while before they create factions. But if enough of them join one faction, which I have found that the democracy faction seems to be really popular with the AI, then they could have a lot of military might just because there's so many countries in it. But yeah, if they get the 2x military might, then they would win the game. Uh, we would lose, basically. Uh, the autocracy faction is founded by whoever started the age. All nations can join or go to war against it. Unrest from war is disabled, so we don't have to worry about unrest anymore, or at least not from uh, from the warfare. And the chaos gain from conquering regions is reduced by 50%. So that'll be really helpful because we're going to be doing a lot of conquering and we don't really want all that chaos that we get from that. Uh, the truce culture power is disabled in the Age of Generals. This is something I never use anyways, but it's one of the culture powers where you can force peace. Uh, so you know, any country you're at war with would uh, you know, not, no longer be at war with you. But you can't even make peace in this age. Everybody is either in a faction together or at war with the uh, the autocracy. So the autocracy countries are at war with everybody else, and there's no uh, no changing that. You can't make peace. I think diplomacy is completely disabled, actually. Uh, the space race has begun. Build a space center and try to be the first to set foot in the moon. The space race is always unlocked in age eight, and so that includes the victory and uh, variant and crisis ages. New governments and national spirits are unlocked. 
and then join international factions by changing your government. So yeah, we'll take a look at this here, as soon as we get into the age. So autocracy is spreading, and there's the new governments. And China did choose to join the autocratic faction, which is what I expected, because we have the alliance with them. I think anybody we allied with probably would have joined our faction. And so if we wanted to like instantly win the game, we could have allied with Egypt, and I think that would have been enough. And then we would have just uh, ended the, the Age of Revolution, and then it would have been a victory screen at that point. Because France, Great Britain, and the Aztecs are pretty weak overall. So I think just us, China, and Egypt would have been enough to basically get the victory immediately. Uh, but I didn't want to do that. I did want to engage with this age. So that's the reason why we just allied with, with China here. And so they are now in our faction. That opens up this new faction screen. The faction you're, you are in is based on the government you have. So these two bonuses at the top, you will gain one of them for being the country that has produced the most ideology in your faction. And so you see our number here, we've produced zero. Obviously we just started this age. So every uh, building or improvement that produces ideology, that'll add to this every turn. And so this number will get uh, increasingly higher. And if we have the highest number for the faction, then we'll get two plus warfare experience for our faction headquarters, which you do have to construct that. And then this one here is gained for being the faction with the most combined ideology. So basically your faction is winning, and so all the members of that faction will get this bonus. So that's a two plus warfare experience. I assume we'll be able to get both of these because we're so far ahead of everybody else. And so that'll be four plus warfare experience every turn that we'll be getting for our faction headquarters. Now these ones on the ideology line, these are gained once your, your faction's combined points equal that amount. So once we have 2000 ideology, so you know us and China will be adding to this every turn. And once we get to 2000 ideology, we'll unlock the operations training field. So that's a unique building that we can construct. And then once we get to 4000, we can promote our leaders to the general. And so that's a unique leader unit only available in the age of generals. And then once we get to 10,000, which I doubt we'll get to, yeah, I don't see, I don't see us uh, playing long enough to get to the, the 10,000 ideology. But if we were to get it, this is a culture power where you can promote the general to a five-star general. So these are the most experienced and ingenious of the military leaders. So that's our faction. Every faction has their own unique bonuses. And again, that'll be based off of the ideology that the other countries adopt. Uh, so let's go and take a look at our national spirits. Uh, remember we're in age eight, so that unlocks a whole new branch of national spirits. And these are the last ones that will be available. And so most of these probably aren't gonna make sense because we're in the age of generals. Uh, space agency, this focuses on that space race. Just makes it easier to win the space race and then gives you some additional benefits from it including this ability here, a culture power to launch a crew into space to complete a randomized mission for various rewards. So while some of these are some pretty good bonuses, you get some knowledge there, you get a lot of innovation as well, specialists. I feel like it's, this one's not as helpful because the space race is already kind of easy to do. It's not uh, a useless one. I just think there's better options available. We'll skip this one for now. Let's go over to the modernization. I just want to show you guys whatever, what all of them uh, contain. This one's focused on production points and improvement points. You also get a lot of extra worker slots. Uh, you get some power in your capitals. But you see most of this is more production and more improvements. So like the high speed expressway it gives you 20 plus production and two ideology. And the engineering culture power here gives production to the target region for four turns, so really focused on production. But the best bonus of the modernization is probably this plus one max town level. Yeah, overall, it's it's an okay one. It's not bad if you really need more production. Want to really focus on that, depending on what victory you might be going for. Uh, Silicon Valley. This is one of the best ones, I think, because it's really focused on knowledge, and knowledge is just so helpful to have in this game. This will give you uh, on 28 targets rare earth metals. As you've seen, we don't have very many of those. They're pretty rare. And you need that in order to produce computers. And computers are all about the knowledge. 
and you turn those into other things. It's like computer simulations. And so if you don't have the rare earth metals and can't produce computers, then a lot of the goods of these later ages you won't have access to. And so that's really helpful. And then they just make it all better. And so this is a pretty good one. If you want to go that route, really focus on knowledge. International finance is focused on wealth. So just increasing the amount of wealth that you get. Uh, this one just straight up gives you 5,000 wealth. Yeah, it's really focused on the wealth. This is 1% of your wealth will be earned as interest per turn. So the more wealth you have, the more wealth you earn. Uh, prosperity bonuses here. These are uh, diplomacy domain powers. So when you're sitting on a lot of diplomacy power, this could be pretty useful. But of course you gotta spend it for uh, investing in this since this is a diplomacy power. Once you have it, this gives you more things to use your diplomacy on. So increasing vassal's population and prosperity. And uh, plus 50% vassal prosperity max. So pretty helpful when you have a lot of vassals as we do. Uh, this makes those housing improvements produce more wealth. Yeah, overall just very much focused on wealth production. I don't know if you really need that because wealth is already so easy to produce. But if you really just want to be racing through your building chains, then I mean, it's it's certainly helpful. You don't have to worry about production at all because you just pay for everything. I really like political science. Uh, this one is similar to the Silicon Valley. It's one of the better ones, I feel. So this gives you the think tank. So a lot of good bonuses there. Knowledge, specialist, ideology. Uh, but what I really like is the annexation. So at this point in the game, you know, we have the exploration power to claim territory, but it's getting more and more expensive to do. And what's nice about the political science is that it grants a whole new power using diplomacy. And I always have a lot of diplomacy domain power. And then also it, it restarts it, or it's, it's starting from the beginning, so it's really cheap. And so you have so many uses of it uh, at that really cheap cost before eventually it'll balloon into a really high uh, domain power cost as well. But yeah, it's just helpful for the late game where you just can't really claim the neutral territories anymore because it's just too expensive. And what I really like using this for is when you combine it with the Age of Utopia because the underwater cities don't expand on their own. And so the only way to do it is using one of the domain powers by... by you know, this late game is just too expensive to do using exploration XP. And so this really allows you to increase the borders of those underwater cities and gain more of the sea tiles. Let's talk about last episode, how difficult it is to get the really high population numbers in your city. Well, this immigration marketing will help you achieve that uh, because it takes population from other countries. You can only use it on their vassals. So you can't use it on their directly controlled cities. Uh, but you can use it on their vassals and then the, their population will move to one of your cities. Now you don't control what city it is. I think it's just the closest city. And so that's kind of unfortunate. I wish I could say, hey, let's bring them to the capital so we can really balloon up the uh, the capital's numbers. Uh, but yeah, you can't really determine which, which city it goes to. I, I think it's just whatever is closest. But yeah, really, really helpful for getting insanely high. Uh, population in your cities. It is a culture power though, so you're using that. But I think it's worth it because we're not talking about moving one population from a, a foreign city to yours. It's a much higher amount. I don't, I don't know exactly how it's determined because it seems kind of like the numbers uh, varied. So I think it might be based off of the population of the city you, you use it in. But you do get uh, a good number of people moving from their city to yours, so also very powerful. Uh, spawning assault rifle units according to the number of alliances you have. Only really useful if you have a lot of alliances. Uh, this diplomacy culture power is fantastic. Generates all needs for your your regions for 10 turns. That's all of your regions. And so basically they're getting 200% growth for 10 turns. And that's just one culture power. So if you're generating culture every five turns, as we usually do, that means every other culture power that you use, you could use on this. And then you don't have to worry about the needs at all for any of your regions. So just stupidly powerful. Uh, this one's helpful as well for when it comes to unrest. Uh, this greatly increases unrest in another nation's region. Not really as good as you'd expect it to be because the AI seems to always have unrest and it doesn't really cause them that many problems. So not as powerful as I was hoping it to be. But overall, I really like uh, the majority of these ones for political science. I think that's a powerful one. I have not tried this one. So I can't really say anything on it, but it seems like it focuses on culture, 
and the information need, which you will eventually need to satisfy in your cities. You can see all the bonuses here. Not a lot of information. Didn't seem as appetizing to me as some of the other choices. Hop culture seems really fun. I haven't tried it, but you get the celebrities. And then they'll help you produce uh, culture with the fashion lines. And you get a ton of other bonuses as well from that. They take their trade good. So luxury, arts experience, wealth, innovation, and culture. This improves the clothing goods. You'll get art experience and culture from clothing. So those already produce a lot of wealth. And now you're adding additional bonuses to them. So it seems really powerful. You can get dance clubs. More luxuries here. Yeah, some, some really good bonuses here, guys. It seems like an interesting, fun one. Especially because the celebrity is like a unit. You know, uh, not a combat unit, of course, but... Yeah, I'd like to try that one sometime, because it does seem interesting. But the one we're going to go for, because we're in the Age of Generals and we're in Autocracy, it makes the most sense to go with the only Warfare National Spirit for this age, which is the Special Operations, and I have done this one, and it's pretty fun. Uh, first of all, you can destroy another nation's town. It is a culture power, so is it worth it when you can just use an army? Yeah, probably not. I, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, because you do have to be at war with them. When I first got it, I thought it would be a way that I could take out towns without actually having to declare war on countries, but you can only use it against uh, a country that you're at war with. So when you consider that, it's just not as helpful, because you could do that with an army already. Destroying towns isn't really all that difficult. And so, not as powerful as I wanted it to be. Uh, this improves your bomber units, so that's good. Uh, this is a warfare domain power that will spawn a special forces unit anywhere on land. So, they're basically uh, paratroopers. Which, there are paratroopers in this game, but they don't paradrop. Uh, I'll show you guys what the paratroopers look like when we get them. They're basically the, the helicopter units. And so, they'll drop in anywhere you send them. So, that's really helpful, because you don't have to have, you know, like a, uh, a region or outpost in the area. You can just drop them anywhere. And so yeah, I like that power, and it's also not a culture power, it's just a warfare domain power. Uh, this unlocks a new flying unit here, an aircraft, which is quite powerful because it has the three-time combat modifier against other aircraft. So it's a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, that's the VTOL stands for. Uh, envoy units can raise improvements. I mean, that seems fun. You could just spawn envoys and move them through territory. They're going to be highly at risk of being destroyed, though, so you got to keep that in mind since envoys can't defend themselves. But still, kind of a fun thing to do here. Uh, amphibious Assault. So this helps the water transport units that get increased movement and range. We're going to have to move across the seas with some of our units simply because uh, all of our enemies are on another continent, with the exception of the Aztecs. So being able to move faster across the seas would be pretty useful, guys. And then there's the Drone Strike. This is a Warfare Domain Power. Instantly kills all leader units in an army and damages all other units in that same army. So fairly powerful ability here. Very helpful. I kind of wish that everybody had access to this rather than just the Special Operations National Spirit. Yeah, I really like this. It is a little overpowered since it does kill the leader, any leader unit. And it's a warfare domain power rather than a culture power. So you can use it as long as you have warfare. So overall, this is an incredibly powerful one. And uh, going to be really helpful when you're in the Age of Generals. And so that's what we're going to select. Uh, the first time I got this, I don't think I did hardly any warfare in that particular age. So it was not the best time to do it. I didn't know it was going to go down that way uh, with the victory I went with in that particular instance. But yeah was definitely not the best one to go for and I didn't get to use these as much as I wanted to. You know, we might want to hold off on getting any of these because we don't have bomber units. We could use this one for sure, but there's other things to consider because we unlocked, let me actually go into that. So into the Age of Generals, we unlocked the submachine guns. And so we have that, that we might want to upgrade some of our units to if they are the proper type. I think we do have some that would upgrade to that. And so we're going to want to use our warfare experience for that, particularly for our units that are on the front line. Uh, these are the other things we got. Submarines, destroyers, the tower crane. That's improvement points. It's building. National temple. We don't have religion, so we don't need to worry about that. There's the radio stations. This will produce the ide ideology. And because we're the autocratic faction, we get two plus warfare. Uh, every faction gets a different bonus from these radio stations. And then there's two improvements, the oil refinery and the military training camp. Let's go ahead and show you this screen as well for the victory age here. So yeah, normally in this age, 
we would have to select a new government as we've done in the previous ages. So you have to do either the peaceful revolution, which is what we do because we did finish up our last government. Or of course you can do the, the coup if you'd prefer using that government power. So basically in one turn, we would have gotten the, the culture power and then been able to select through the peaceful revolution our new government. And there's three government types, democracy, communism, and I think the other one is called traditionalism. And out of those three, because it is a shame I didn't get to, to show you guys how they work, uh, but out of those three, one of them seems vastly underpowered compared to the other two. And that is the, the traditionalism one. Again, I think that's what it's called. I might be mistaken on it. But communism is pretty good. It's got some great bonuses. And the democracy is highly focused on like knowledge. And that one's uh, really solid as well, since knowledge, again, is, is so powerful in the game. Communism focuses on other things. You know, need satisfaction and production and, and really just makes a lot of your improvements better. And so those ones are, are solid final government choices, but the traditionalism is, is not great. It's entirely focused on having a powerful religion. And so your religion has to be at a certain level of dominance to get the bonuses. And even if you are uh, able to get those bonuses, they're not that great compared to the other two governments. But unfortunately, if you've been investing in religion, that is the only way to keep the religious bonuses in the game. Uh, if you select democracy or communism, then religion is completely disabled uh, throughout your country. Uh, it's, it's irrelevant. And so that's another reason why I feel like religion is just not great in this game. Unless you're going to highly focus on it by getting one of the religious national spirits like crusaders or theologians or the war priests. I think those are the three uh, religious ones. But outside of that, I just don't think it's worth it because when you get to the, the final three governments, you either have to go with the weakest one or choose to dismantle your religious infrastructure. So you spent so much time investing in that and it becomes irrelevant. And so, yeah, I really don't think that religion is uh, well done in the game because of that. Uh, but yeah, we don't have to do any of that. We don't have to select one of those three governments. We already have to use a culture power to do the peaceful revolution because uh, we already have the autocracy. So we can immediately start investing in this. So we'll get this one here. This will unlock the government bunker. This is a building. So it produces government experience, warfare experience, and ideology, and also gives some combat experience for our units. And then the faction headquarters, which that generates ideology, and then there's all those buffs. So the autocratic faction buff will give us the two warfare experience. And then for the the two that we looked at before, that's more warfare experience that we saw in the, the faction screen. It does require some education though. And of course you get these bonuses where uh, we're increasing the maximum domain experience improvement points and specialists. So that's with all the governments for each age. All right, so we're gonna keep on investing in these. We can either unlock the shock trooper, so this is a special unit just for autocracy, or we can do the coup, which is a warfare domain power. We start a coup in a region, must target a general in an enemy region of a nation with a lower national power score. So the use of it's pretty limited, but if you do that, then they'll become rebels. I don't know that we'll use that now because I got to be a general. And so there's not going to be generals anywhere just yet. And I think getting the shock troopers is a little bit more uh, powerful, particularly because you can increase their attack with the, the stormtroopers here. So let's go and get that. And we don't have any further, or not enough anyway, uh, of the government experience to get the next branch here. We can also invest into our social fabric. Let's go and see which one we want to get. So we could do more unrest reduction. We're probably pretty good in most of our territory though. Expansion costs would be helpful. Again, improvements is not as big of an issue, but uh, I'm pretty sure that does apply to the specialists. So it's helpful, but probably expansion or the upkeep cost, since we're gonna be getting a lot more units. So either one of these would be good. The thing with the government is eventually this is gonna stack up so high and we're not gonna have anything to use it on. Now, I don't know if this has any government. Yeah, this has no government uh, powers here. So this is all we're gonna have for the rest of the game. So just spawning settlers is the only use. So once we get all the way through this tree, we're gonna have a stack of, of government experience. And so we'll be investing it in organizations. So I think we should just do that. And the thing that we're always short on is warfare experience. So let's go ahead and invest in that. 
to reduce the upkeep because that, that's pretty powerful. That's going to save you a lot of money uh, over time. But the first bonus, we are already saving 38 from the unit upkeep. So a huge difference from the, you know, eight wealth return that each one of these is granting. Yeah, that's a uh, much bigger bonus to the wealth when you think about it. And it's only gonna get better and better as we get more and more units that uh, are more expensive. So remember our warfare experience, we have 320. We can start investing in special operations, but I think we should take a look at any units that are on a front line. So probably the units down here. If there's anybody who can be upgraded here, which we do have a unit that can become a shock trooper. So I think that's these guys. Yeah, the uh, the muskets can become shock troopers. Let me just show how they compare. I'm gonna upgrade one of these and then keep the other one so we can kind of dip back and forth between the two. So the attack goes from 28 to 31. Defense goes from 39 to 43. So not a huge change there. Health and morale are the same. Movement does go up though, so our units gonna be faster. Uh, upkeep will also go up by a little bit. And then we'll look at the the bonuses in combat. That's where you're gonna see the biggest difference. Uh, with the musket, you're just getting the two X bonus towards, uh, or against Cav. You still get that bonus with the shock trooper, but they also get the two X bonus against armored units. So yeah, obviously, this unit is, is much better. And so yeah, we're gonna wanna upgrade all of our units. Um, but we don't have a unlimited amount of experience. So let me just see where we want to upgrade these guys. Because you got this army here that we're going to have to contend with. Yeah, they could attack our towns here. We need to wipe them out. I was going to go after the city here, but I think the better option is to move over here and attack them. So let's go ahead and do that. Move this unit over here. And then, yeah, we want to upgrade all of our units throughout this territory. There's the submachine gun. And so that's going to upgrade this guy here, the Dragonfire Grenadier. We'll upgrade to the machine gun units. So they do not have the, the stats that we've seen with the shock troopers, but they do get the 2.5 combat modifier against line units. And so that results in them having pretty good combat. Uh, you know, pretty good attack bonus, but it's not as high as the previous unit. So that needs to be kept in mind as well. Because I think we were getting a 3x bonus from the previous units. So let's go and upgrade this unit here. We had one more unit to upgrade there. And we still got plenty of warfare experience. I don't know if we have any of the units on front line territory. What we could do is spawn some though. I'm going to go over here. Yeah, they can't upgrade anything. But we can spawn some machine gun units using warfare experience for the volunteers, and I think we should. And I think that unit should be here, because I don't think we're going to hold on to this otherwise. Yeah, they got a big old army here. I don't even know if you can hold on to it with the machine gun units. Yeah, it's going to be rough, guys. Unless we can get the special forces, but then we, we wouldn't be able to spawn them this turn. And they would be better than the some machine gun unit, though. Hmm. 180. How much do we currently have? 287. We might be able to. But we wouldn't be able to do volunteers if we did that. These units aren't great. These volunteers are pretty expensive. I'm thinking more about the cooldown. We might get more warfare experience. Maybe we'll wait to do this, since none of these are going to help us immediately. Let's wait before we spawn anything, and hopefully I don't forget to do that. Now, we also need to defend this territory here, but they have the two early machine guns, so they should be okay for now. Yeah, I think they'll be all right. All right, so let's go ahead and start doing these attacks here first. We do have this army here that we need to take care of. It's a dragon fire artillery of the Aztec Empire. So we need to get them taken out. And then I want to take out this outpost as well. Might use this guy here to take out him. So we can go after this outpost here. There's also that outpost there that needs to be taken out. And then we have this army up here, which I actually did forget about. We want to upgrade them, so that'll spend more of our warfare experience. Oh, we got a ton of units to upgrade here. Okay. Need to be done, though. It wasn't much warfare experience, though. It didn't cost us that much. So we'll go over here. I don't know if we'll be able to attack their city right now. Let me just take a look. It'd be a draw. This is not the most powerful of our units. 
Uh, but what we could do is go ahead and promote one of these guys to a leader. And this would be the leader eight. Because we're not getting the tactics bonus for these guys. So let's go ahead and do that. I know that there's a lot of warfare experience. I think it's worth it. But we can't attack this turn, so he's gonna have to stay here for now. Alright, so let's go ahead and take these guys. Have them take out that guy. Just get rid of him so we don't have to worry about him raiding our stuff. Gets us a little bit of warfare experience as well. And then these guys will attack over here. And get this uh, finished up. This shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, very easy battle. Didn't even take very much damage there. Let's take out that outpost. Got us a bit more warfare experience. Uh, we can also upgrade these to destroyers, and that uses expiration XP. Do we want to use this particular upgrade this particular unit? We will have some limitations on it. Might wait to upgrade them. So these are the explorers that we're trying to land here. I think we just needed, or the explorer and the hero. I'm trying to do the attack again. I don't even know how weak or strong they were. Looks like we just barely won that. All right, so we're definitely at risk of being destroyed there now, unfortunately. So let me use the survivalist here to improve them. And we might just end up losing the hero here, unfortunately. He doesn't have a lot of experience though. So I don't know if we'll upgrade that guy. Let me go through all our other C units first. And then we're waiting on these ships here. And they're going to offload our merchants so that we can now start trading with China. Because we need to uh, step up our wealth gain return. Can these guys even land? They can. They can land right here. And it would probably be good to protect these merchants. So we will have them go with the Explorer. And then we'll move them down here and trade with all the, the large cities of, of China. we got to make up for all that wealth we're not gaining anymore. Since we uh, lost our merchants in the other other locations. I'm not sure why we're being notified about this guy. He's harvesting. It's a choice to cancel the harvest. Okay, we have just these two units that we can move between. So let's go ahead and get them upgraded. Two destroyers. And I think we have... Yeah, we got another one over here. Yeah, we can get most of our ships upgraded, I think. Let's go ahead and do this attack here. This all will generate us more warfare experience, so that's going to be key for us, since uh, we definitely need more warfare experience. Not sure what these guys were doing, just taking out barbarians, I guess. Barbarian hunting. Eventually, we're going to need to use our fleets to take out any uh, enemy ships that are going across the sea to attack our territory. Uh, this guy can be upgraded, I guess. So we'll let me take out that. Barbarian ship, and as destroyers, they can—they're much more effective. Uh, one lone destroyer can get it done. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this guy here. I keeps notifying me about him. I'll upgrade this guy as well. Get that destroyed, and that's the last one we'll be able to upgrade. We are out of the expiration XP. All right, the merchant that was in Paris was not destroyed. All right, well that's interesting, but I don't see how we uh, get him out of here. Because we're at war with France as well. You see, we're at war with everybody but China. So France, the Aztecs, Egypt, and the United Kingdom. And there's no way to negotiate with them in the age of generals. You can't do any diplomacy. It makes the most sense to go out to sea. That's the only chance this guy has, I think. So we'll go out to sea and then try and get him over to Chinese territory, if possible. Uh, these guys, again, I don't know if they're going to make it. It's a lot of territory they got to go through, but uh, there's no enemy units around here. Maybe they can make it. We're trying to get them over to our territory there. So we'll see what happens. They'll probably get destroyed. Could have used the survivalists on them if I hadn't uh, spent all of our exploration XP, so that's kind of a shame. And this is our army that's going over to Egypt. So we're going to probably land here. And then just march south. So of course, China is going to be at war with all these countries as well. And we can select our first tech of the Age of Generals. So I feel like we should go for the area warfare because we didn't get that in the Age of Revolution. So we don't have any planes yet. 
And so I think it would be a good idea to, to get it. Now we can always go back and get some of these, like the innovation. But there's certain things I feel like we absolutely need to get. Like some planes. So we're going to do the aerial warfare first. I did want to point out that uh, the power projection, this is the one we'd want to get to increase our maximum army size. Gives you some really other nice bonuses as well, including the airlift, unit action for any unit. Select a friendly capital with an airport to be instantly transported there. So that's pretty helpful. Also, better water transports. That'll be the Navy transports. The airbase. And then this gives you the drop paratrooper ability. And so I had talked about how paratroopers don't really act as paratroopers. They're like helicopter units. Let me show them here. So this is the paratrooper unit. They are displayed as a helicopter in both the you know unit illustration here and on the map. So they really seem to be more like air cav to me or air assault, which you know, uh, air assault is when they helicopters come through and then they repel out of it. And so if you're in the military, you can get an air assault badge, which means you can repel out of helicopters. Airborne, on the other hand, which is what a paratrooper was, I was in a, uh, an airborne unit. You know, they drop out of planes and then parachute down. And so it's just kind of weird that they were trained as helicopters. And I was saying they can't really paradrop. Well, technically they can with this here, with the warfare domain power, but it spawns a paratrooper. So basically they're only paradropping once when you first spawn them in. And then after that, they do not have the paradrop ability. So unlike in uh, Civilization, for instance, uh, when you have paratroopers, you can always use that. It's like a unit ability that they can utilize. And they can paradrop a certain number of tiles away. And so it doesn't have that action. Once they paradrop the first time, if you use this power, uh, they can't do it any any further. But I did want to point this unit out here and this, this tech, because it has some really good stuff. But we're going to go for the aerial warfare, just because we don't have any planes yet. And so I think it would be helpful to get that. We don't want to have uh, our enemies have any advantages over us. And the planes are great. And so, yeah, we're going to get that, uh, especially since we're at war with everybody. And having those would uh, really help us out. All right, so we need to select something for Ravenna to construct. Uh, they did just finish up the construction of the field howitzer. Uh, we can upgrade these units here to National Guard, so that will improve their unrest reduction. But we're not going to use our warfare experience for that. Uh, we won't upgrade any units that are like in this territory for right now because we have so many other uses for our warfare experience. But we will continue to build units after we get any new buildings that we might actually need at the moment. So for example, Ravenna is not producing any ide ideology and they need six ideology because for every population above 30, you need one. And so that's a problem for us. And so we should probably get ourselves the radio station, not the faction headquarters. We'll get that in our capital because you can only have one of those. So I think it would be best to have this in Rome. So yeah, we'll just go with the radio station. There's also the government bunker, which produces a little bit of ideology. I mean, they produce the same amount, actually. And this gives you the same amount of warfare experience, too, on top of the government experience and the combat experience. It makes more sense to do the government bunker. So we're going to do that. Uh, but that's not going to be enough ideology. They're still going to have a shortage here. Do we have access to any of those improvements just yet that will produce ideology? I don't think we do. Because we unlock the oil refinery, and there's one other thing, the military training camp. And that will give you the housing and the warfare experience, but not ideology. So there's not a whole lot we can do for ideology just yet. It's just going to reduce our need satisfaction, essentially. There's not much uh, to be done about that. Uh, we do have the wealth to race out some buildings, but we should probably ra rush out this culture first. That culture power. And then as far as what we want to do with it, I think we should probably raise an army in our locations because, you know, we're we're in a position where some of our areas just aren't well defended. We also have the volunteers, but again, I don't think one, one guy would be enough since those caravan guards are getting more and more outdated. I don't know how, how well they defend themselves here. Could change them to the castle. But I think they also have a... A unit that gets outdated and that costs valuable engineering experience. So yeah, I think uh, using the culture power here to raise an army would be our best option right now. To make sure we don't uh, lose this, that might not even be enough. With a caravan guard with them, might not be able to defend against this, this British unit here. 
So you might still have to do the volunteers. Could also do the tactical insertion and just see if we have enough experience afterwards. I don't know how much it costs to do the first one. I would assume no. You know what? Let's go ahead and get the, the other volunteers. So we'll have three submachine gun units here, and this should be enough to defend the location with the caravan guard. Hopefully. We're really salty if we end up losing these after I spent a culture power and a bunch of warfare experience to get them. Yeah, obviously that would be devastating. Uh, but that also means that we don't have much defending us here. I'm just assuming the Egyptians don't have anybody to go after us just yet. So let's hope that ends up being the case. Uh, but they do have better defenders here. So I'm less worried about it than the, uh, the caravan guard. Uh, so let's go ahead and now rush out the telegraph office. Yes, more culture. And Constantinople does not require ideology just yet. Since they don't have the uh, higher population. I really feel like getting these government bunkers everywhere is the best option. It satisfies the ideology once you do have the above 30 population. Most importantly, it gets you the two warfare and two government experience. And we need both of those right now. So I think that's the, the best thing to construct in all of our locations. Do we want to rush anything else out? Let's just take a look at locations that... A little bit closer to being done. That's that's still a lot. 1440. And uh, we'll have a chaos vent eventually. I suppose we can go ahead and spawn an artist. I think that would be smart. And do the culture movement so we get another culture power. Could get more units. Uh, but I really think getting the cutting edge for the innovation would be helpful. Because we're only getting the plus 7 because we got the innovation event as soon as we entered this age. So, you know, we got that plus 10 and then we had whatever we already we were already earning and then we got reduced. And so we're not getting as much as you'd normally get when you enter a new age that you started. We're only getting plus seven rather than the plus 10. And so getting the cutting edge to get more innovation events would be pretty useful as well. You know what, let's go ahead and do that. I really like the innovation events. Now you can see we're currently 92% towards victory here. And that's as far as like our faction strength. We have to get to 200%, and so we have 91.73. So a lot of work left to do in order to actually win. So some people were thinking that this would be like a quick victory, but it's gonna take some, some effort, guys, both on our part and on China's part. Once we wipe out the Aztecs, though, that frees up our armies to go elsewhere. So we'll see what happens in this turn. We have a lot of enemies now, but the Aztecs are our main threat at the moment, as well as the British when it comes to our outpost here. So let's just end our turn and see what happens. I assume the British will attack that outpost. I don't know if we did enough to hold on to it with the, the 210 strength and then whatever we're getting with the caravan guard. Maybe. At the very least, they'll probably raid that location. They have nowhere else to attack us. If they were smart, they'd send their troops out to China because that's the main threat to them, not our little outpost over here. So I want to see what happens there. This is their turn now. Yeah, looks like they moved them elsewhere. Okay, that, that was wise. A little outpost is not much of a threat, where uh, China is a real threat to them. Uh, China's already taken some of their territory in the past. You know what? We could have our merchant escorted by these guys. They send them over there. It's not that far. There might not be any, any, any enemy ships that can really pose a threat to us. We need these guys to go over here. Yeah, it could just go over there. You can also loot there. Uh, loot their thing here, the, the fish, get 20 wealth. But I think it's far more useful, the merchant is, I mean. Getting them into a city as quickly as possible. Yeah, see, there's some British ships there. And so that's not going to work. We're going to have to go over this way. And they could still end up getting destroyed by those, those ships. Although, you know what, that might not have been warships. Uh, these guys should come over here to escort these troops and that merchant fleet. And then they'll attack these barbarians. We still want to do these attacks to get the experience. As we've seen that we do need a lot of uh, warfare experience at the moment. So I don't know if we'll find any more ships around here. I feel like we sunk all of them. Yeah, there's no barbarians anywhere. And we do need to go after the enemy ships. 
rather than just barbarians here. It gives you the experience, of course, but uh, we got a lot of enemies we need to go against. All right, so do we want to go ahead and do this attack here, knowing that they're probably going to bombard us? Yeah, they do have the towers there. And we're probably not going to win the first attack, so yeah, I guess we can try. It's going to be a draw. This is a decent army. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and try, guys. Let's see if we can't take them out. A lot of units you got to fight. We do have this tank unit to take all the damage, though. And we took out their walls. We did a lot of damage to them. Not quite enough. They might destroy the tank when they bombard us next turn, but remember, that's the, the armor vehicle is outdated at this point. All right, so that outpost has been destroyed. Here's their army. I knew they were going to go after our territory, so let's get them taken out. And this is kind of a big battle here, just as far as sheer number of units. So we'll watch it. We don't watch the battles often, but we're going to just dismantle them just because we have so outdated them. Uh, but they do have the, the muskets, so they're only one tech behind. It's the crossbows that are really outdated. It looks like we should, yeah, definitely win this. Though some of them might actually retreat. I don't know if we'll get them all destroyed. Nope, we got them all destroyed. All right, excellent. So nice win there. Got us some more war of experience. And then these guys still need to be updated. And we can only do one. That was all the expiration XP that we currently had. All right, so they're going to go... They're going to go up there. Because we know there's British ships over here. I think those are British ships. Could have been French ships, but I thought I saw the, the British flag. All right, and then these guys are going to go over towards... We already have somebody in Shanghai, so we need to get this location, this location, and I suppose London as well. Yeah, those are the three largest cities I'm seeing in China that we don't have merchants already. So let's start moving down there. We'll make sure we escort them as well, because there could be enemies in this territory. That would just wipe out any merchant that they find, and so that's definitely a threat. All right, so we could do the attack downhill. It'd be a draw though, and uh, I think our hero it would die, and so it'd be better in our best interest to just go ahead and let them heal up on the the hill there. All right, so this army could uh, attack here and get it finished. Yeah, you know what? That's probably the best way to do this. I didn't realize they were so close. Yeah, let's go and attack here and wipe that out. So you don't have to even worry about them being bombarded. So now we've taken over the capital, and we're only going to get 10 chaos from every city that we take. And that also means we can now bombard this unit here. All right, so I want to say we still have one more army, this one here. And they're going to go after that location to destroy the castle here. Give our territory room to expand. So we can try and get control of these regions here. Might even destroy that town. I don't know, because this eventually will all be our territory as well, so destroying towns is probably not the best way to go. Yeah, I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense. It's only crippling our future vassal. I am not sure what's going on with this location here. Yeah. So I'm going to skip the turn. Because, yeah, it said he was raiding. Uh, these guys survived another turn. All right, excellent. Can they make it? I don't know. There's an army right there. Um, well, if we had the exploration XP, maybe we should go in the forest. So we have a better defensive location. Yeah, I suppose we'll do that. And then maybe spend the exploration XP to, to get the weakest guy healed up. I'd like to, to help these guys survive, if possible. All right, and then these guys are continuing over to here. And then do we want to go to rush this out for Rome? Because they got stuff they could, could be constructing. You know, let's go ahead and do that. I probably should have rushed that out last turn. I was thinking it was Rome. We don't want to rush anything, but uh, they're not growing as fast as they could be because of the lack of ideology. And we want to get the faction headquarters from all those beautiful bonuses that we'll get there. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get that. 
And then we've got these two armies here. Am I creating a new army? I guess I'm creating a new army right now. Let me just take a look and see what these guys got. Uh, you could go ahead and retire this this leader here to get some warfare experience. They don't have they don't have a lot of uh, experience at the moment. May yeah, I get you forty three point seventy five? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Since they're outdated. And then I'll open up a slot here. Which, I think this is just going to be another army. Because they already have both of those units. Yeah, they're just going to a different separate army, guys. And then we need to update these, but we're not going to spend the warfare experience on that. Not at the moment. Let's go ahead and spend this on the special operations. And get the tactical insertion. So spawn a special force unit anywhere on land. And then we take a look at the cost of that. And it's going to be 20. Okay, so we could have done that last turn. And remember, we can spawn that anywhere. So it doesn't have to be on one of our, our cities or towns or whatever. Could spawn them here. Since we're about to be launching an offensive anyways from this occasion. Just make sure they're defended in case the Egyptians attack here. Because I, I feel like this location, we've already invested pretty heavily in it with the three submachine guns. And it is just an outpost. Here you only have the two machine gun units. But France is pretty weak. Yeah, I, I think the best location is here. Now you can spawn them behind enemy territory. But outside of like ravaging their stuff, I don't know what you'd really gain from that. Because remember, ravaging, you know, pillaging things only gives you the 20 wealth. Even in the late game here, that's not much. I don't, I don't know what you really gain from going behind enemy territory. It seems like, because this is a pretty solid unit, we should use them for warfare. I'll show you guys what this unit looks like here. So 38 attack. Look at that defense. 53. I mean, just solid. Both attack and defense are really, really good. And we just compared that with the, the units we can currently construct. So remember, it's 38 and 53. And then plus you get the, the 2.5 attack modifier against armored units. So keep that in mind. 38 and 53. Dip over to Rome. And take a look at the shock trooper. So 38 and 53 versus 31 and 43. Like it is so much better. It's just significantly better than these other units. It's a very powerful unit, guys. So we'll keep him here for now until the army gets there and he'll be joining that army. To fight... Uh, by the Egyptians. All right, so we do have Diplomacy XP. I think we're gonna use that for as merchants uh, to get more merchants into China since they're the only place we can trade with. Uh, but doing that's gonna require an escort. So we're moving ships up there currently. And so we'll probably spawn them here. I think that's our closest location to China. So spawn them there and then move the, the merchants down. We have another merchant here. And so I guess it makes sense to go ahead and spawn the merchant now. We won't put them out to sea just yet until we get somebody to escort them. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and have them skip their turn. Suppose we should be using this engineering experience to expand a town, and we're going to do this one here since it does give uh, such good production bonuses. Let's get that to Ravenna so they can reduce their buildings a little bit faster. All right, so I believe that is it. Let's go ahead and turn and see what our, our enemies do. It's really just the Aztecs that uh, can really attack us at the moment. We just destroyed one of their armies and took one of their cities. So they've already been greatly weakened. But we can see their armies are moving into our territory. I don't know if they're going to attack that town there of uh, Sardis's. Yeah, they got uh, three units behind us at the moment. So we're probably going to have to move over and wrap those up before we can push forward. Because, yeah, they could pose a threat to our towns. Not our cities. It's not a large enough army. All right, so let's have this merchant join them. And then this fleet will escort them. And I suppose these guys might be fully healed up. Can they fit in here? They can't all fit in there. I don't think they really need an escort. We're actually gonna go ahead and go over to here. And they do look healed up enough. So we're gonna send them over to here to get that taken out. And then this fleet, hmm. 
Before I do that, this time, let me make sure that we heal up both of these guys. Because there are a lot of armies over here posing a risk, a threat to us. If we move here, they'll be attacked. I don't think anywhere we go, we're going to be attacked by these armies here. How strong is this army? It's 371. Because I was going to say, if you move here and then you move out those two armies... I mean, they could just end up retreating as well into our own territory. But yeah, we could move these units here. 163 plus 142. Does make a decent strength army here. I don't know if I want to risk the special forces unit, though. They're not coming through here. They can only come from this direction. I imagine they would be able to move this far and attack the army here. I mean, it's not that important to save the explorers, but you know what? I'm moving them here anyway, guys. Let's see if we can't uh, defend effectively right here. And hopefully don't lose the special forces. We can always spawn more, though. In fact, we can do that now if we wanted to, to make them even stronger. Why not? So now that 396. Because there's no cooldown on this, you can just keep doing it. Do we want another one here, though? Because they're pretty strong at this point. And we have other weak points. And using them against the Aztecs would be helpful as well. Do we have any like open army slots? Not really. But what you could do is upgrade one of these guys to a hero. Or excuse me, a leader. Since our leader is now currently outdated. So it'd have to be one that has two of the shock troopers. Although... We don't have the warfare experience for upgrading them in the first place. So what we would want to do is retire one of our leaders here to get some warfare experience and then promote one of our other units up to leader eight. So they're better than the, the leader six since they're pretty outdated at this point. And then you have one open slot that you can spawn that unit into if you got the spare experience. These guys are kind of expensive to promote though. So you might not even have the spare experience, but you could eventually do it. And so it would have to be an army that already has, you know, two higher level units. So probably one of the ones over here, like this one. Yeah, I think this one makes the most sense. So let me see if I can't get some additional warfare experience through some battles. So like with this army, let's go ahead and have them attack that army there. Take them out. He's in the forest. Let's get him wiped out. And that got us a little bit of warfare experience. And then these guys have to go back. Again, I feel like you gotta wipe these troops out. You can't let them just go behind your your territory. Oh, that's an old guard cab. And a samurai. Wow. Alright, so get those guys wiped out or actually force them to retreat. Yeah, the, the art, old guard cab retreated into that musket unit, so still gotta wipe them out. Anyways, that got you some more warfare experience. Um... This is just an Arcana. I'm not really too worried about that guy. Let's see how we want to do it. I don't know if they can take that on their own. They can definitely take that one, though. So I think what we should do... How's the best way to do it? I mean, it looks like it's going to be two turns no matter what. Because if you don't want to go in that location to pass close to that city, which I don't, then you gotta stop here, in which case I think it's the same amount of turns. So I think we should go here. Simply so that we don't have to worry about any units coming over here and attacking us, or if they do, we can we can fight them. Could uh raise this improvement, but again, I don't think it makes sense. Because all this is, in my opinion, is our territory. So just build another army there. And uh let's go ahead and upgrade this destroyer. And then do we want to go ahead and escort? Yeah, we don't need to escort those. I don't think we really need to escort any units. Let's just go over here and destroy these ships. So these are two cogs. Really old ships. Oh, we didn't destroy them though. Wow. Okay, whatever. It makes a ton of sense. Alright, so these guys are just looking for ships to attack. I don't think there's any around here. Uh, just trying to get ourselves some more experience. Warfare experience. And again, we need to start engaging 
enemy fleets, though. I don't even know if they'll be able to go across. Yeah, they might not even be able to. Uh, they'll probably focus on the territory that they're near if they attack anywhere. So we'll heal this guy up real quick. Let him sit there for a minute. And then these guys here, we'll go over to Egyptian territory. At the very least, you can start uh, looting their stuff. See, I see there's one Egyptian unit here. All right, so these guys, let's go ahead and retire the leader. Getting us that warfare experience so that we can promote, we'll promote this guy to the leader eight, and then we will spawn one of the special forces units. Now we can't just keep doing this, even though it's, it's really not expensive, so we could keep doing it. Uh, but if we ever wanna make any uh, progress through our special operations, we you know, obviously we need to save up that warfare experience. I wanted to get one of these guys. And then these two armies should be able to take these cities on their own, you would expect. Yeah, they shouldn't be too difficult. And so one army goes here and the other one goes after this one. And then they would combine for the, the larger, more difficult uh, cities. Oh yes, these guys are moving towards the Chinese cities here. We need to get onto the road network so we can move a bit faster, get out of these forests. And that's why we're escorting our troops. Because you see there are enemy, enemy units around China. Uh, you know what, let's just have these guys fully heal. So they don't notify us again. And yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on with this unit. Yeah, I, I don't know why they keep notifying me about them. Oh, I see what's going on there. This has been added to Ostia. And so now they're working it. They have an improvement there. That's probably what's happening. And so we can't, can't use this bow hunter here anymore. Okay, that makes sense. So... I don't know if there's any other areas to send them to. I assume there's got to be somewhere and like recently gained territory. It's probably further down here. Yeah, like over here where these elephants are or these two locations. There's already a hunting camp there, so let's not destroy that yet. Let's let's go ahead and send this guy over here. It'll take him a while to get there, but that's okay. All right, so Kyoto has finished up with the throne room. That's more government experience. Definitely needed. Kyoto has 30 population, so they will need ideology soon. So getting the government bunker would be helpful. That's an upgrade to this as well, so we just got that. Beautiful. Uh, they don't have the central power, but power is not an issue yet. So yeah, let's go and go for that. And we can not upgrade the poorhouse to the military training camp. Uh, that can be done in other places too. Okay, so that's interesting. That doesn't mean that we won't be getting the big old skyscrapers then, right? Since we'll get these military training camps instead. And so that does increase in rest. You get 10 more housing. And it will require a power drain while the warehouse does not. But you'll get the warfare experience. Instead of the wealth, which I think is a lot more useful. So you do have to have the available power. But yeah, let's go ahead and change up to that. This is what it looks like. Um, over here, the printing press can be turned into the publishing house. I think we had seen that the issue here is we don't have enough paper to support that yet. So need to, now that we have these, put the logging camps throughout this territory. I know they don't really have a population to support this right now. Can we get... No, nah, we can't get the, the uh, rare earth mine yet. We haven't uh, gotten that tech, so we still need to get it. So that's given us more wood. But you gotta actually turn that into paper. Uh, we never did fix this. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we took in care of all those rebels, we can start upgrading all this territory. You gotta use all these improvement points, guys. All right, so I guess paper is what we need. So we could build that here. Just looking for other locations. I'm not really seeing any. So yeah, we want to get the, the paper mill. Turn those logs into paper. And then that will result in us having a bit of excess paper. So we can now upgrade the printing press to the publishing house. 
And I'm not sure. And yeah, we still don't have any excess paper to, to put another worker into there. Okay. I guess I can take a look and see if there's any paper available for trade. Still not yet. Okay. Just waiting for other countries to catch up to us. As far as like their trade goods go. Uh, we can rush out this building here in Gaul. This is the central power. They do need that power. So we'll do that. And uh, maybe the sewers next. They will need ideology soon, but they need sanitation now. So we just want to get that. We want to rush this out. Uh, nah, that'd be all our money. And we're going to have a chaos event at some point. So we got to keep that in mind and keep uh, some excess uh, wealth. Uh, now we can get the coup here. I think we should wait for one of these two. I have the plus 10 attack for the shock trooper or the plus one warfare experience from combat per unit. That'd be incredibly helpful. That's a lot more warfare experience per turn. And then get to these ones where there's some really great uh, bonuses here. So con conscript soldiers spawn an army of four shock troopers in friendly territory. That's a warfare domain power. It gives you four units. So very powerful. But look at this one. This is a culture power. And it spawns a shock trooper in every friendly region. That is ridiculously powerful. That's going to give us a stupid number of units. Like every single region. That would count... Uh, in our uh, vassal territory. So that's a lot of extra units, guys. And so getting this would be incredibly helpful. Uh, airstrike is also fantastic. Calling an airstrike on a target's location near one of your generals. So they do have to be near a general. And so you have to have that unit. Once you do have it, it raises improvements and damages units. That's a warfare domain power. So yeah, some great stuff here. I think this is the one we want to get first, the draft. But we got to get one of these ones. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to save up to get the 180. We're already pretty close. In fact, we might even get that this turn. Coming up here, 16. No, it looks like we won't have quite enough. All right, guys. So I guess we can try and do one more turn here. Hopefully it doesn't take too long because we haven't gotten very far in the episode because we, we discussed all these different things. The national spirits, the new government, the new age that we're in. And we're at war now as well, so a lot more uh, units to move around. So we're going to move slower anyways. It's just kind of part of uh, warfare. Let's see that the Egyptians are still fighting these barbarians here. Trying to get them taken out. And so that's helping them stay distracted and not uh, be able to put all their units against us. Where we'd be in a bit of trouble because we only have that uh, small army currently. Though that small army has gotten larger. And we got another army coming to their continent. And then we'll start advancing the front. We'll have to see if they attacked us or not. Pretty curious about that. But let's go ahead and do this attack here. Take out this city. Gotta produce more chaos. Will be an easy win. Got us some more wealth as well, which we'll need to pay off this chaos event that's likely to happen soon. And then let's go and attack these French ships here, which we still didn't destroy them. Oh, they just upgraded. I said French, I meant British, British ships. So they upgraded, and therefore we didn't, uh, didn't get them destroyed. Or maybe we destroyed one of them. All right, so they do have two armies. They didn't attack us, they could have, but they did not attack us. Hmm, where is this fleet? Can they get into the city? They can. All right, so you're gonna need to go on to defense for a turn to defend uh, the town and the city. So let's let them come after us. If they combine their attacks against either of these, maybe they're a problem, but probably not, guys. Because remember, you have the town and city defenders. So I think we'll be all right. I don't know that we need to spawn any other units with the warfare experience. I think we can go and invest further in here. I think we'll be okay. All right, so this army's going over here. We're going to want to land probably right here. Although that's a larger army. Probably right there, actually. So we'll land over there, and then we'll get all this uh, these barbarian units taken out. And then these are merchants that we're escorting over to China. Might want to have them land further south. So a little bit closer to these cities. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you could put one here. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, and then this fleet, we're just looking for enemy ships. There's one right here. Let's go 
and take them out. It's a water transport unit, so that's like a former country that still had a remaining unit. So probably Persia. And then this ship, we just let him heal for a turn, and then we're going to send them, I guess, against the French. Remember, the AI does not build a lot of naval ships, like military ships. And then we're just looking to raid. I mean, there's really nothing to raid here up on this particular coastline. Unfortunately. So yeah, we'll have to go and attack these guys now. This is a cross river though. Hmm. Probably not the best way to do that. Can we attack this way? We can. I just don't want to take any unnecessary casualties. All right, and then this army, they no longer need to chase them down since they've been destroyed. And so do we want to go ahead and start moving into this territory? Who is this guy here? It's a pioneer. Let's take him out before they rebuild that outpost. Yeah, they're trying to get the outpost re-established. Uh, re and there is an army coming up behind us, so unfortunately we're going to have to take them out. We would be able to take that city, but yeah, we can't let these guys get behind us like that. So gotta wipe him out. And this is the field marshal. Now we still have the better tactics bonus, but it's not a significantly higher bonus than it's only 20% because they have the field marshal. He just doesn't have any experience. So yeah, they did focus on warfare, so they have some of these really good units here. But it's not enough because they're just too far behind us. Um hmm. The army. Seems to be a threat here, isn't it? Okay. Maybe move. Jeez, I'm not sure how best to do this. I guess we'll move over here. Move around this way and go to that city. Cause yeah, this city's under threat. Bit of a bit of a problem. Alright, so let's let, let these guys continue to move. And I suppose that's it. We can go ahead and rush out a culture. I uh, can also rush out some buildings. But here in Naples, you can get the telegraph office. Let's go ahead and do that because they have the ideology issue here. So let's get the government bunker. And Gaul can rush out the sewers for 890. How much money do we currently have? I think we should be good to go and rush this out and still be able to pay for the, the chaos event. And so that'll improve their sanitation. Make sure that the need satisfaction remains high. And do we want to go ahead and get the government bunker now? Yeah, probably. Uh, they're going to need ideology here soon. So might as well start working on that. So pretty much all of our cities are getting that, except for Iberia currently. They're getting the telegraph office. Do we want to rush that out? We can also rush out this. And there's a culture that needs to be rushed. Let's rush out the culture. Yeah, we'll do that. And then, as far as what we want to get, we need to get them a town. So let's go ahead and get them one over here. I don't know where else you'd put it. Maybe right there. Gives them the most territory. Yeah, this one here is good for uh, creating a lumber town. Does it have two locations? But we're just gonna do this one and be like a, a coastal town for the well. All right, excellent. So they can now continue to grow their population. There's other areas too that need towns. Yeah, like these two. I mean, this one I don't think we're gonna do anything about. But this one, I can see putting a town here. Although I don't know, cause you know, I really want, well, we want them to get that. Yeah, I suppose you put a town here. As long as we get the outpost here. Cause I wanna make sure the oil's going to somewhere else. Yeah, you can put the town there, or you can put it there, it doesn't really matter. So I suppose that would be the next town. Just continue letting our, our vassals get larger. Let's get us all that beautiful wealth and uh, other goodies that they grant us. I mean, if you just look at like a small town like this, it's not getting you much. But again, we look at one of our larger towns, larger vassals, I should say. Hiroshima. You see how much they're giving us. You look at this one here, probably a little bit more from this one. Yeah, 41 wealth. 3.84 knowledge. I mean, yeah, this is this is all pretty helpful when you have like a bunch of vassals giving you all that. 
Not as much as we were getting, though, because remember, our government changed. So we're not getting the diplomacy XP or the government XP. So that's why our government XP is so much lower than what we were getting. Same thing with the diplomacy XP. We're just not getting as much as this because of our government changing, which uh, we're just not getting as much goodies either. In fact, I think our, uh, our prosperity percentage is now lower. We can only be at 375, but it doesn't reduce what you're currently at. So all the ones that got to 425 will remain at 425. So that's really helpful. Because yeah, our maximum is now 375. So that will affect any any of our vassals that weren't already at 425. But yeah, we lost all those, those bonuses from our former government. All right, so unfortunately we do have to end the episode here. We do have some things we might want to do with our experience. Can't quite move along with the government. Well, engineering, we could do an expand town or clear cut or something like that. So yeah, probably uh, we'll do that next next episode. We could also spawn another artist and do another culture power. Maybe I'll do that as well. I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.